cat interviews at uber confluent indeed and many many more companies i have seen it all after countless hours on the other side of the table i know exactly what top companies are looking for especially in nld in this course i'll share the insider blueprints what to focus on especially key design patterns how much multi threading very important counter question traps and how to tackle them confidently this course is structured practical and tailored on what companies are looking for right now let's get you into ready right now in the last video we saw about behavioral design pattern let's start off with the first behavioral design pattern which is the strategy design pattern as the word itself says strategy which means okay we will have different strategies for same problem for example we saw the payment let's say if you want to do a payment we can change between different payment strategies it can be credit card debit card literally anything and that's how strategy word came in picture now imagine that you have a very traditional normal approach how would you have gone about if let's say i ask you do you have different payment logics you can be credit card paypal crypto cash anything so what you would have done is okay arin i will accept a payment method you will uh, you will tell me okay the payment method is let's say credit card then with the string match i will then have a logic of entire payment processing this is the first way which you will go about obviously you will see that you will, for each individual payment you will have different strategies okay obviously for credit card the, like the authentication is entirely different paypal it is different crypto it is entirely different and then what if cash and all that stuff coming so it is entirely different so logic you will keep here every logic you see that this will become very 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 bloated and also it does not follow open close principle it says open close says it is it should be open for extension and close for modification which we exactly saw in the previous design principles now coming on that how would we correct it obviously the first course correction which seems like the main thing because obviously we saw that if we try to extend just even one new you know one new payment system we will have to change this code this existing piece of code we will have to change which obviously violates open close principle so obviously we saw that it's very you know the code duplication is there it's very messy and hard to maintain obviously scalability issues are obviously there that any new piece of code needs to change the existing piece and obviously making the existing piece very bloated and again whenever you see if else you know conditions obviously it's a bad code again uh, there's a caveat to it that uh, for factory when you have to just initialize in or you know just create an object then it's good but if when you want to have the entire behavior and all that stuff inside that if else block oh you are very bad like this, this like it is very bad so what we thought of okay let's use interface and then we will maybe try to implement that for example we took that payment strategy again this is an improvisation which we thought of because of what we saw previously so we had that payment uh, method and then we thought okay let's implement credit card payment debit card payment so each individual payment and their own processes will be there okay that's how you saw that now the actual payment processing logic is now for each individual classes and that is something which will help reduce bloating in your existing code so this will make much more cleaner code and also easier to maintain easier to maintain but did you see one again that fact that still although although now your if else statements are very less bloated they will only have to call this process payment but still your payment processor will every time any new payment comes in has to change for example right now i have these payment strategies if else if else if else any new comes in i have to add again if else so any let's say apple pay so i i obviously have to add that specific payment which is an issue right that's the, 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 like that's the main thing that adding any new payment which with cause an issue scalability obviously again you might say it's not a big issue yes it's not a big issue but still like we are still kind of violating open close principle so if we can go about making it more modular that's the case with strategy pattern how we go about it we will say okay we have a payment strategy and everyone will actually have to implement process payments it is similar to as we saw above so what we do okay we will have credit card payment we will have paypal payment we will have crypto payment we will have stripe payment now rather than having those if else i will end up using payment strategy which means i will have a corresponding strategy and i will pass it here thus you will see that I, okay i have defined a variable payment strategy right and this will be initialized to the correct payment strategy whatever i want to consume whatever i want to consume now let's say if i pass in the credit card payment strategy 
So this payment strategy will be initialized with credit card payment strategy. And then whenever I call the process payment, obviously I am indirectly calling the payment of credit card or the process payment of, of, of my credit card. For example, you see that I now initialized credit card, PayPal, crypto and Stripe. Now in my simple processor, in my payment processor, I just simply asked, as you can see, this was a payment processor. This is my payment process, which actually, which will actually process the pay, actual payment. And here I can dynamically pass here. I can dynamically pass any corresponding payment strategy. And that's the beauty of it. So on runtime, I can choose. Okay. Let's firstly try to pass credit card payment strategy. I passed it. Now, whenever from this processor, whenever I will call the process payment, it will now go and technically call credit cards process payment. And again, I can have my own individual header method as well. So that let's say next time I want to call it for different payment strategy, I can call that as well. So I just did a PayPal set. And then next time when I call processor dot process payment, I'm technically calling PayPal's payment strategy and so on and so forth for crypto and stripe. Do you see that any time in future, if I want to add, let's say anything, let's say I want to add cash. So I can just have a new class, which will implement the existing payment strategy, a new class of cash, which will implement the existing, pay existing payment strategy and the payment processor will not change. The only thing I will have to add is okay. Now accept the new payment or basically process the new payment, make a new processor for it, or maybe use the existing one and then you are good to go. And that's how you simply made your code much more, much more clear and modular. So your payment processor actually uses your payment strategy. So this is the, your payment strategy. And again, anyone can actually implement this. So I can have credit card payment, PayPal payment, crypto or Stripe. And again, I can just have anyone in future as well. So it's very easy to extend. It's very, it's, it's literally very easy. And again, when you have to extend it, you will never have to change in any existing piece of code. So obviously there's a high flexibility. Again, all these good words always comes in that, you know, you have very high flexibility, easy maintainability, separation of concern, because right now cash doesn't link anything to do with any other Stripe or crypto or PayPal or credit. It doesn't have to do anything with the other payment strategies. So it's pretty good, right? And again, extensibility is always the case when you have much more flexibility. Now, lastly, some of the real life use cases, as you will see around and around in many of the problems, which we will discuss, I can say discuss, I mean the actual problems, which we are going to discuss in LLD interview, these ones, you will see that you have payment methods. Whenever you have different payment methods, as we saw in this example as well, you can use simple payment strategies. You have different sorting algorithms. Okay, I can do that. Okay. Whenever you have multiple ways to solve the same problem, it can be calculation logic. Maybe in your industry, you're working on, you know, some things where you have to apply different calculation logic that also you can use a different calculation strategy. Obviously there are parking costs, shipping costs. So all these costs, which are there, they have different pricing strategies to it. Because obviously, let's say if you were to th thought of airport parking, airport parking for starting four hours, there's a fixed cost, you know, or there's a fixed cost. Then every after four hours, there's a, you know, per hour basis cost. And then there's also weekend cost. So there are multiple costs. So these are the pricing strategies, which I can actually have. And on runtime change based on if it's a weekend or not, or multiple things. Obviously, and last we saw that this is one of the most important design pattern, which you should know. And again, as we saw that all the good words, all the good uh, buzzwords, it, it makes a word modular, flexible, scalable, cleaner and maintainable. And again, anything which you can think of, this is pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. Obviously, you can easily add any new behavior without modifying any existing code. And that is the beauty of your strategy design pattern. Cool. I hope you guys liked it. Let's make sure that we hit the like target of 250 likes and see you in the next video. Goodbye. Take care. Bye bye.